I was detoxing in the Cambridge police station over a long weekend from a four gram a day heroin habit. And I was taking between 15 and 18 milligrams of benzodiazepines a day, clonopin. The disease of addiction is so insidious that if you had put the drugs in front of me at that point, I would have used them. The withdrawals were horrible. I was facing losing everything in my life. And you can't really express that kind of pain. That was my bottom. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. Every 24 minutes, a person dies from an opioid-related overdose. This epidemic affects all of us. We're losing family, friends, coworkers, and community members. I spent maybe two to maybe three hours a day on the bed. I did not live by a 24-hour time clock. I lived by dose to dose. I spent most of the day counting my pills or looking on maps to find places where I could go and, and drown and hide my body from my family and hide my shame from society. The crisis has hit the Northeast particularly hard. In 2015, over 1,500 people in Massachusetts died from an overdose, and the death rate continues to rise. Together, the GE Foundation, CAMTEC, and Global Medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital tackled this problem head-on through the Opioid Epidemic Challenge Summit and Hackathon. The goal of the event was to create innovations that will help transform opioid addiction treatment, prevention, and recovery. I would like to see this experience be a beacon of light to people in other communities where they're losing loved ones and say they're doing something special in Boston. We need to do that, and we need to improve on it and make it better, and then as a collective, we just we make a place of hope. This isn't about them. This is about us. It's almost impossible to conceive of a framework in which there is some audience that isn't affected by this. If there's ideas born here at the hackathon that may seem crazy today, but can change the opioid crisis, and, and end the unnecessary loss of life. Like, that's the hope that, that we're building here today. So if you smart people can figure out a way that we get that message of hope and optimism to everybody who struggles with this disorder, then I think we've made great progress in the work that we're doing. Having it an opportunity for people to bring different minds together. Um, minds where you'd have people that could be a doctor, an everyday person, um, somebody who's doing research, somebody from an educational facility, putting their minds together to be able to take the time to talk about these issues and learn about what's been happening, what could be happening, and to be able to walk away with a plan. There's a lot of value in bringing people together from different disciplines to work on a problem because there's people in this room, in that room, that have perspectives that are far different from my own. And as a patient and as a survivor of a war, survivor of stigma, I feel that it's about the people that are being affected most that need to be the ones that help because the people that solve solutions are the people that have experienced firsthand. A big part of why I stay clean now is because I want to be able to help folks that were where I was um, years ago. The opportunity for really positive change is very real and it will have an impact on an audience that is far bigger than I think most people can imagine and appreciate. I want to thank you all for putting your energy into this. I truly believe that will come out better for it. Really, it's about saving one life at a time. Um, and if there's anything in there that can even save one person, it's made this whole thing worth it. Um, because I know that one person in recovery means 10 or 20 more people whose lives are affected positively, and that makes the whole thing worth it.